Hello, my name is Christian Crank with Trainace, and today we're going to be doing a demo with SSL Strip, a program that strips the SSL portion of an HTTPS page and makes HTTP making, making it a hundred times easier to sniff. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get um, SSL Strip, and we're also going to need DSniff and EdderCap. So let's get SSL strip first. So you're going to do a wget of http www.thoughtcrime.org subdirectory software subdirectory SSL strip and then you're going to get SSL strip 0.9 tar gz. <clears throat> now we're going to get dsniff and edrcap and we're also going to need to get python twisted web so it's twisted. Um, if you're running Kali Linux or Backtrack Linux, you'll probably have these up to date and you won't need to get them or you can try to get them if you might not have them. But if you have Backtrack, up to date Backtrack, up to date Kali, you'll probably have them. If you have Ubuntu and stuff, do this. So you're going to do a sudo apt-get, install, tack y for yes and you're going to do dsniff. So this shouldn't take too long if you don't have it. If you do have it, it'll give you this, zero upgraded, zero newly installed, and zero to remove, and 19 not upgraded. And then the next one you're going to be doing is edrcap. So what you're going to do for edrcap is do a sudo apt git install edrcap. Like I said, if you have everything, you should already have it. I got an error here because it's different in Kali to get the .8.0, but if you just do sudo apt-get install edrcap, you should get it. Now, um, we're also going to do a sudo apt-get install python twisted web. Kali and Backtrack should have this. I'm not sure about the Ubuntu guys, but get that. So, now that we have all those three, I'm going to do an ls here and you're going to see an SSL strip dot uh, tar gz. So I'm going to do a tar tack xf xzf, my bad, to SSL strip. And then I'm going to do another ls, see that there's an SSL strip folder. I'm going to cd into SSL strip. And we are going to have a copying, a lock.ico, which is going to be a favicon, a readme, a setup.py, another SSL strip folder, and SSL strip py. So what we're going to do here is we're going to install SSL strip. So you're going to do that by typing out sudo python setup.py install. Now this is going to, it installs really fast. It's not that big of a thing to install. And now that SSL strip is installed, to view the different options, we're going to be using SSL strip attack H. So here's your option page for SSL strip, and we're only going to need a couple of these options. So the first thing we're definitely going to need is to actually set up our machine forwarding mode now. So make sure you root, open up a new terminal, and you're going to be doing a port forwarding thing. So what you're going to do is, if you're Ubuntu or anything and you're not root, you're just going to do a sudo su. If you're Kali Linux or Backtrack, you're usually root from the start, so you don't have to worry about that. If you're not, sudo su, enter password, you'll become root. So to set up our machine in forwarding mode, we're going to do an echo. We can do a sudo echo to be safe. Uh, in quote one, out quote, and then we're going to push that to proc sys net ipv4 and ip underscore forward. And then if you hit enter, that should echo it into that forwarding. And now we're going to set up our IP tables. So to do that, we are going to type in this command. So it's going to be IP tables, tac t. We're going to set up for NAT. 
we're going to set up pre-routing. We're going to set our protocol as TCP. We're going to go to destination port 80. We're going to do a redirect to port 10,000. Hit enter. That should set up your IP tables. And the last step is we're actually going to start up an ARP spoof. And then we're going to use interface at zero, Ethernet zero. And you're going to set up the target box, which is going to be the Windows XP. We're going to set up and the default gateway as well. So that, oh, you got to do attack T for your target, which is going to be your legitimate target box. And then you're going to do attack R for your host, which is going to be your default gateway. So once that's done, it's going to start spitting out a bunch of random stuff. You can just move it to the side. And then back to our original window, we're going to do an SSL strip. So we're going to set up SSL strip, we're going to do attack A for all, so that's going to log all the SSL on HTTP traffic. We're going to do attack K for kill sessions in progress. And we're also going to need, remember that 5 icon icon, we're also going to need that attack F. So it looks like the site they're still visiting is still locked down with HTTP, HTTPS. So you're just going to do attack F, that'll use that lock icon. And then you're going to run it. Now this is going to push a bunch of random stuff into a log file. And that's pretty much it. You don't have to touch it anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our uh, target boxes, which is my Windows XP service pack, three bucks. We're going to go ahead and close out of that command prompt. We're going to open up a web browser. And we're going to go to Gmail. We're going to go to Gmail. We're not. We're going to go to Gmail. Okay. <laughs> so once we're at uh, Gmail, if you look up in the top right or top left, it is HTTP instead of HTTPS. So the SSL strip worked. And if I was with a next gen browser, it would give me a lock, but I'm not. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your email address and your password. And you're going to sign in. And once it's signed in, once your target is signed in, it is going to tell SSL strip to push all that into a log and go, go, go. So there we go. We're signed in and everything. We're going to go back to our attacking box. We're going to control C out of SSL stripped. And then we're also going to control C out of the ARP spoofing. So what we're going to do is you're going to see the SSL strip log when you ls into the SSL strip folder. Uh, I usually make the term uh, terminal bigger for this just so it's a little clearer to see. And then you're just going to cat SSL strip dot log. And I usually do a tech more or a pipe it to more. And if you look through all of this, it's going to have every thing like oh it was resolved host not cached resolve host successfully do, 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 do. and it's going to be this for this huge file so since it's pretty much logging everything it's going to be a big big file and you're going to be seeing these huge chunks which is actually going to have your email and password in it just not for this chunk or more of the chunks after it if you get lucky enough to catch it on the first first part of it like if they're 
Gmail like sign in page was their home page of their browser, you'd find it. But other than that, it's going to be really big. So looking through this usually takes quite a long time, as it is for me. So since we got stuck on that MSN page, it looks like a lot of stuff from MSN loaded up and got captured by our SSL strip. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to control C out of this and I'm going to do a less or a tail even to see if this gives us the okay. Definitely not. So we're going to do less. See if that helps us. Pretty much gives us the same place as more got us. Come on. So let's put us in the same position as more. So actually, you know what? I have an idea. So instead of all this less and stuff, I'm going to do a just cat, just a regular cat. This will take us to the end of the file. And the end of the file is probably where our Gmail resolve, resolved username and password is going to be. So, while well, this pulls us down, so SSL strip pulls HTTPS apart, makes it so it's HTTP because you're making it a port forward and then you're redirecting it to port 10,000 in SSL strip. So that when people enter their into the username and password, they think they're getting on an HTTPS server, but they're not because they're so used to Google being HTTPS that you kind they kind of get hey you know what I'm used to it being secure no problem username and password so this is definitely where uh, best practice comes in for network security you want to make sure anything that would be secured like your Gmail or any other place you'd enter your account name and password would be safe and secure with HTTPS you know you want SSL and everything protected because if you don't attacks like this can happen so right now we're scrolling up through and we can see a lot of gmail stuff and you know you're just actually looking for when the login happened so what you're doing is you're going to be scrolling up to the point where it was the http get, uh, s git where it would be so you'd go to the http git where the username and password was filled in so you're just scrolling through looking and it's going through all the APIs. It's going through all of the sent mail folders and stuff like that. So this is after we're logged in. So we're just looking for when we logged in. Should be up here soon. It's looking a little better. It's looking like we're getting close. Aha! Okay, we found it. So, right here is going to be our email and our password. So, set course net at Gmail and password is going to be trainings. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys learned something. If there's any questions, please email me at ccrank at trainace.edu. Bye.